we're here, we're live and direct right here in Coventry with the one and only Shawnee B. Hey, hey, hey. Yeah, man. You must be like. <laughs> the halo. That's it, that's it. <laughs> So of course, let the people know, the listeners know, who is Shawnee B? Uh, Shawnee B is just a <laughs> DJ, entertainer, somebody that loves music, obviously a producer, radio broadcaster, on BBC Radio One Extra for the last 20 years, Grammy winning broadcaster, um, CEO of my own little company, Brockout, that kind of um, curates black culture, yeah. and radio and media and stuff like that. Yeah, so, you know what, somebody that just loves the thing. Yeah man, for real. You know what? I need to ask you, how did it all begin? Because you say you're just a DJ, but you're a DJ that DJs for everybody. You know, <laughs> do you know what? I, I would always say that my team was just inbuilt, just yeah. from being at home. Like my mum was a keen lover of music, my father was a keen lover of music, and that was like, my mother is from Jamaica, my dad's from Dominica. Okay. So my mum was John Holt, Gregory Isaacs, Bob Marley, Dennis yeah. Brown, you name all that kind of stuff. Um, my mum loves ska music as yeah. well, like, on a, especially like it's Easter today. Yeah. If she break out the ska and then you, like the Prince Buster, then my work man starts skiing around and tell son, you don't know for that, like this. <laughs> my dad was the complete opposite side. My dad yeah. was a Calypso fan. And okay. I, I grew up on Mighty Sparrow. Like, yeah. I, I don't think there's a Mighty Sparrow record that you can play in front of me wow. that I don't know. Yeah. But then when I became a teenager, yeah. I obviously. Um, I had my own taste of okay. music and that's where um, I was actually a hip-hop DJ before okay. I even started playing dance or whatever. Yeah. But it was when I was about 14, um, yeah. I started to link with two Jamaican weeks that had just come over to the UK. Yeah. And they was like, everything that you're doing with the scratching and whatever, yeah. if you could do that with dance on, yeah. crazy. And this was at the time where like, sound systems were moving over from one turntable to two turntables. Yeah, yeah, so, okay. so Stone Love and people like that was really becoming infamous. Yeah. And even over here, like Chris Goldfinger, he kind of helped move that culture along as well. Yeah. Because my brother had a sound system, had access to turntables and that kind of stuff. Yeah. My story is crazy because yeah. there's so many different like avenues. Yeah, sound system stuff is my brother. Yeah. I worked in a record shop since I was like 13, 14 yeah. as well. So that was myself. By the time I was 16, I was managing record shops at the Shepherds Butch on the road called Road and Crow. I was on the radio when I was 14. Yeah. I was doing all sorts, but I never ever thought. I was doing anything. Okay. You were just, you know, just doing it yeah. just for the sake of doing it. Yeah. And it's like, oh shit, now I've got all these special skills like yeah. from understanding how to sell records to yeah. people. So that I said like a different kind of way of watching people absorb music. Because yeah. even as a man that works in a record shop, I can make you buy a record. Yeah. I know there's tactics of doing it. Okay. Making the client yeah. like the customer buy a record. Yeah, yeah. But then on the radio that's not what my thing is all about. It's about making you probably see a different side of a track that yeah. you may not have heard. I love the fact that I can make DJs like music yeah. that they didn't like. Okay. But when they hear me play on the radio, They're not like, in a dance, but on the radio, it's like, oh shit. Shawnee's really getting into this song with this track. Yeah. I've had DJs come to me and be like, I hated that track. And I heard you play in the mix as well. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, it's like so many different um, parts of departments. Yeah, because you know, you've played for so many different artists, so many different people. Has, has there been that time where you thought, I love that and that's the moment for me? Um, I think I always have moments, yeah. to be quite honest with you. I think I'm, I'm blessed that every couple of months is another moment that okay. I say, damn, I can't believe that's happened to me. Yeah. Um, I think my thing is, rather than having like the, the, the I'm a fan. Yeah. So when I, when you talk about all these different artists and different people and this like that, I'm a fan. Yeah. Like, first of all, so that's the way that I approach music. Mm. And then the way I play music is, I suppose I put myself in that fan position as yeah. well. So yeah. I, every day for me is a different day yeah. that brings some form of excitement, joy, mm. and it doesn't matter what the level is, whether okay. it's Glastonbury or playing in somewhere like this social yeah. center in here today. You get what I'm yeah. saying? For me. Everybody's a customer. That yeah. I, have. I want you to go home feeling yeah. good. Okay, yeah, man. I feel that because every time you play on the radio, I listen to you regular, and I hear and I feel the energy through the speakers. I'm like, yeah, man, Sean is rocking it. You yeah. know, what I think it is as well because I'm coming from an era where I know when we didn't have. Okay, yeah. So to have a station like One Extra. Yeah. If you're, one extra is 20 years this year, if you're 20, even yeah. 25, 30, 
you won't know of a life where you had to go and hunt black music. Yeah. Like hunt it down. <laughs> yeah. Or like, yes, there was pirate radio stations and all the rest of it, but then for me especially to run a platform like BBC or the yeah. industry, I don't walk into that building thinking like that's oh, just a job, whatever. Yeah. I walk into that saying, right, I've got to protect this mm -hmm. because I know what it means for the culture. I don't even like using that word culture in that manner, but I know what it means for the, for the music, yeah. my community, to have a platform like that. Yeah. Because 20 years ago, it was very thin on the ground. Yeah. So I walk into that building every day like it was the first day that I'm going in there. Yeah. And to be, make sure that what at least what I put out on here yeah. is showing respect and the fact that, yo, we did not have this. Yeah. So when you don't have something, you got to protect it. Yeah, for real. And you know, myself, I'm 29 this year, and understanding the music and the history and the culture is so powerful. Mm. Like listening to the sound systems and trying to understand where you guys come from, what you're bringing forward. Mm. I think it needs more of it, but what do you think? Um, you got to know where, where you're coming from to know where you're going. Yeah, true. Um, I do, I don't like to be too critical of generations and all the rest of it, but I don't know how much. Uh, this new generation right now even yeah. care about what took, past, yeah. what took place in the past. Yeah. For them, it's just the past. Um, when I was coming up as a younger selector, yeah. my thing was I want to impress that big man selector. Yeah. Over there. I want to find some somewhere, even in my face, say, Yo, little boy, you get me? Even yeah. like about five years ago, I was on the Jamal Cruise mm. and um, his name is Cody Singh from Bodyguard, the owner of Bodyguard Sound. Yeah. He just watched me play, no mic, just selecting yeah. for like in between the sets and the jam up crease. And he came over to me, he was like, yo, no music in a room, do I? And gave me his card and he was like, I'm, I, I, don't tell me who you are. I've been listening to Bodyguard for me tonight, I know who you are. And I walked back to my room that night, like, you are too. Yeah, there's nowhere to feel in this thing. No, there's I'm, nowhere to feel And I'm already established, I'm active, yeah. I'm doing my thing. But even even for like the most smallest of person to come and tell me, oh, I love what you're doing in the show. Yeah. That, that to me is like, it, it doesn't matter the size, it's just for me, it's just. It's a new feeling every time I hear it. Yeah, for real. And you know, there's been some controversy going on in reggae, mm -hmm. in particular, you know, with Soldier, with yeah. the Grammys. And I wanted to know your opinion. What do you think about it? Uh, my opinion on that is, number one, a lot of people that were complaining. Yeah. Social media allows people just to chat. Yeah, true. That's just true. Just chat. Yeah. And I try my hardest not to listen to everything because. It's not everybody should have an opinion, yeah. number one. Like, sometimes you're meant to just be a spectator yeah. and just enjoy, observe, yeah. Yeah, observe and enjoy it. So it's not everybody's meant to have an opinion. I think because everyone's got an opinion, it's like people sit down and wait for their opinions. Yeah. Like, and <laughs> it's interesting where some that me should have an opinion, yeah. it's others that might not have been allowed yeah. this. So my thing for the whole soldier team is, um, for those that are complaining, first of all, yeah. did you listen to the other albums? That's true, yeah. Like, you can't complain about something yeah. and you never listen to the other albums. And I put my money on it, that 8 out of 10 people that I cost yeah. never listen to the other albums. <laughs> yeah. Don't know what Grant Morgan album sounded like with the country vibe. Yeah. Don't know what Tana's album sounded like with the whole African um, direction that she went into. Yeah. Don't know the Scorcher tracks like Black that Jesse Royal had on his album. Like, there was so much quality that was in that, that I know. Spice's album, yeah. even some of the best tracks on Spice's album, I've heard certain DJs play them. There's a track on there sampling You Don't Care For Me At All. I think yeah. it's a banger, like yeah, ready, awesome. like yeah. I haven't heard not one DJ play it, much less for a DJ to come and tell me say you listen to it. Okay. So that's one part of it. The other part of it is this. I understand when people chat about culture and cooperation, I'm the first yeah. to call it out 100 percent when yeah. I see it and if I don't like it. But what you can't afford to have is for we as black people we've all been accepted yeah. of different people. A lot of that is why we get mash up yeah. because we're blind. Oh come on in, come on in, come on in. And history has shown us that, you get what I'm saying? That people turn on us yeah. and we invite them in. Yeah. But so I, I can understand the reservations of people, but I will say this, without the inclusion of white people in uh, reggae music. Yeah. Would the cells have been there? Would the industry be able to be where it is? Mm. Um, 
So if people enjoy it, yeah. eventually people are going to want to be part of it. Yeah. And once people are your part of it, you get what I'm saying? Once you're part of it, you want to be fully part of it. Yeah. And does that mean that I must exclude you from the, the winnings of if you, if you fully come out and do something and you do it to a, to a level that I can't deny it. Yeah. Like, I just can't, I look past your colour. I just can't deny it. Yeah. Does that not make me the same as a racist? Yeah. Deny me. What do you feel oh. I am? On the face of it, I was yeah. as a white person. <laughs> okay, okay. You get what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. But you're a white person that obviously loves the culture. My granddad's black. Well, there you go. See, there I can't deny you. You get what I'm saying? I can't yeah. deny you. It is what it is. You get yeah. what I'm saying? So, obviously, you're some people. Their yeah, family heritage moves one yeah, direction, yeah. some move the other direction. Yeah, you get true. what I'm saying? But you live it, you, you know what it is. So yeah, that's what it is. So, yeah, I, I have no issue with, um, with Soldier at all. Yeah. Is it my brand of reggae? No, 100%. Yeah. Did you hear me play on my show? Doubtful. Yeah. Have I played Soldier on my show before? Yes, I have. Because yeah. I played the track with Damian Marley. Yeah. There's always going to be something that I'm going to be able to find yeah. in something. For you real. get what I'm saying? Yeah. And if I want to. Um, promote that or that direction, then I will. If I don't want to promote it, then yeah. I just continue yeah. elsewhere. Do you get what I'm saying? Yeah. There, there's certain dancing records that I don't feel because it's not what I'm about. Yeah. I don't I don't play them. I just don't put it in my curation. There, there's certain artists that I can't play on the air because of policy of BBC. It's never uh, what I do. Yeah. So for me to bypass one track or one artist or whatever, I, d I don't think it's a big to be quite honest. Yeah. Like, and, and for me, I'm a Grammy winner. Yeah. I've got a Grammy certificate on my wall in my studio. I won with Morgan Heritage in 2016 for the Strictly Reads album. I had the title track that I produced off of that. But Grammys don't make me. Yeah. People that make me. Yeah. Like, as I walked inside upstairs, yeah. people were clapping. Yeah. Yo, am I Grammys dad? Yeah. You get what I'm saying? And my thing is, let me put my energies into what supports me. Yeah. And a lot of people look for, there's wit and there's depth. You yeah. get what I'm saying? That's true. And with the Grammys, that, that gives you wit. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? I really couldn't give a toss about that. Yeah. Because I know at the end of the day, what's going to keep me employed, yeah. keep me relevant, that's my people. Yeah. And if they're in the Grammys, cool. If they're not, then which part? My thing is, and anybody can ask my manager. I mean, they actually want my role in my studio. I won the Morgan Heritage in 2016 for the Strictly Reads album. I had the title track that I produced off of that. But Grammys don't make me. People that make me. Like, as I walked inside upstairs, people were clapping. Yo, am I Grammys dad? You get what I'm saying? And my thing is, let me put my energies into what supports me. Yeah. And a lot of people look for there's wit and there's depth. You yeah. get what I'm saying? That's true. And with the Grammys, that, that gives you wit. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? I really couldn't give a toss about that. Yeah. <laughs> because I know at the end of the day, what's going to keep me employed, yeah. keep me relevant, that's my people. Yeah. And if they're in the Grammys, cool. If they're not, then which part? My thing is, and anybody can ask my manager, if you need actually war over this, I'm, I'm a product of the streets, I'm a product of my community, yeah. Yeah. whether that would be um, a suburbs or a ghetto in a city estate, I'm a product of that. Yeah. That's what I aspire to, to yeah. kind of up, up, uplift and, and just celebrate that. Yeah. I want to celebrate other things. Yeah. Twitch, man. So I respect that. <laughs> so, Definitely. Yeah. No, because it's refreshing to hear it. Mm. Because you don't really hear that often enough. You know, when it comes to music, that you're for the people rather than just growing and growing for yourself. So it's nice to hear it. I, I, I about 10 years ago, yeah. I lost my radio show. Didn't lose my contract, I lost my radio show. Okay. I was flying. I was on Radio 1. I was in the whole remix thing. Everybody knew me as a remix kid. Yeah. I had, I had broadened and gave my remixes more hits. Yeah. So I was mixing drum and bass and all that kind of stuff and dance and bringing the music to a different place. The radio show had doubled the listenership on Radio 1. I was nice. I lost my radio show. I lost my radio show. Yeah. And I lost my radio show trying to be part of something that would have given me more wit. But 
What do you, it was me because I love doing what I do with remixes. I never ever play what I don't like. Yeah. But when I lost my radio show, I went back to my ends. Yeah. Because the minute you lose shit on BBC or any of them um, big stations, yeah. People forget who you be. Yeah, yeah. Let me tell you that. The yeah. phone stops ringing. Yeah. Agents start telling you, well, you was getting 900 pounds, now you're going to get 500 okay. I sat there and I watched that. I go, yeah. Because I'm not from that world. When I start seeing that, I'm like, later. If you yeah. did that in the end, you'll get moved to for a move like that. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? Like, and I'm like, okay, so you only don't rate me because I'm on one extra. Plus, I don't know why I lost my show. Yeah. I never lost my contract, but I lost my show. Yeah. And for eight months, I realized, wrong. no matter what happens, yeah. you're going to go back to where you're you from. Came from. Yeah, man. And that gave getting the opportunity to get back on air. Yeah. That's when I went on air and I said, I'm going to be the very black. The very best black person I know. And at that time there were certain broadcasters on the air. And they was probably chatting more black than me. Okay. And I was like, is it? And I always remember going on the air and saying something about orange. Okay. Like saying high range. Yeah. And for me there was no turning back from that. I'm like, later, I'm gonna I'm gonna be me. Yeah. You that grew up in white city state in a Jamaican and Dominican house. So I'm just gonna be yeah. myself. Yeah. And from that I've seen like, this is what I say, every day is a different day for me. Because yeah. like, I learned it. I just saw my thing stepping up, stepping up. Yeah. And when people come out to me in the streets, I whisper in my ear, Shani, see what you're doing, I'm whispering. Mm -hmm. I'm whispering in my ear, you know? Yeah. It's like they're protecting me. Mm -hmm. It's like we're slaves out in the field still. Yeah. And it's like, yo, big man, see what they're doing. Yeah. But you don't care, I'm at my no, 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 no. Yeah. It's like a protection, <laughs> yeah. man and woman, you know? Yeah. And I'm like, wow. That made me really realize to myself, you know what? There's nothing like hood love. Yeah. That's the real <laughs> life. It's authentic. Because if you're rubbish, yeah. they're not going to tell you a big man, you know, I'll go on with nothing, you know. Yeah. So when I realized, yo, let me just represent me as who I am, yeah. on color, and even with the trips to Jamaica for one extra, yeah. I'm in the streets every day. Yeah. Like, <laughs> some of the places that we go, BBC ain't meant to go there. Yeah. But, my thing is street culture. Yeah, so if I'm gonna do this properly, I'm gonna be in the garrison yeah. communities yeah. and uh, where it's all at. Where it's all at. What's the point yeah. of the way? And the funniest thing is the BBC yeah. team yeah. love when they're in those places. Yeah, yeah, no, if okay. I take them to a uptown party, Charlie, what are you carrying us here for? <laughs> they wanna go into a boom boom that yeah. hot Mondays, boom Sundays, whatever, yeah. wedding yeah. Wednesdays. They wanna do all of that. And that's what I try to bring back. Especially when I'm on one extra. Yeah. Like first and I obviously. Yeah. Mm. But even um, I've been doing a lot of daytime shows of late, and I think my popularity is increased because yeah. I'm the guy on the air that go and chat about hard work. Yeah. In the middle of the day, yeah. people are messaging me that like, yeah. you on BBC Radio, I chat about hard work. Yeah. Like, I chat about Escobar, it's finish. Yeah. Like you don't care. Yeah. No, I don't. Because yeah. I'm the one that's gonna look at you and say. There's more to my culture than jerk chicken, bass lines and gal whining. Yeah. I'm going to chat about everything else. I'm going to include family into all of this. So, I, there I say, I think I've moved from being just a DJ mm. into a... a Storyteller. Yeah, cultural, <laughs> cultural yeah. Represent, uh, representative, representative, you get yeah. what I'm saying? Like, For somebody real. that... And people tell me, mm. we ain't got another one like you on here. Yeah. What do you mean? Shawnee, who else is on here like you? Yeah. Just don't let know it. Yeah. That them pressure there on my shoulders. Like, oh. I was gonna say the yeah. pressure. Yeah, it's a lot of pressure because you know it's how people don't play. Yeah. So yeah, it's it's, it's, it's not easy, morning. but I love it. Yeah. 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 What's next for you now? What what can you envisage for the future? Because you've done so much. What can you? Well, I've got an album that I've been sitting on for the last eighty months. Okay. That's like thirty, uh, 30 different artists over three tracks. So I can't wait for that to go. That's mixed, ready to go. Yeah. Clearances are beast for that. Um, I think once that drops, I'm going to be going head first, like fully into production. Yeah. Um, our media companies that we have, um, Brackout, 
I'm also part of um, like my management company, but I'm part of that company, Playmaker Group. Yeah. And we're heavily involved in like um, producing and doing a lot of radio programs, podcasts, and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. A lot of the stuff that you may hear on certain stations have like proper cultural relevance or whatever. Yeah. Um, that's our, our production company that's doing doing that. We recently just did um, CBBC, um, like a Black History Month mm. special for them. Not Black History Month. I, it started off as Black History Month, yeah, then it right. ran all the way through um, like the middle of last year. And that was like young kids yeah. chatting about their Black History years and whatever. Um, I think next for me is literally just continuing to do what I'm doing yeah. and just opening up as many doors um, for myself, for the culture, and for new people as well. And yeah. like looking at the next generation as a mentor. Mentoring yeah. is really important as well. Right? Yeah. For young young DJs, young men in particular, but young DJs as well, young men only. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but definitely like young DJs to mentor them and try and help them get to the position that I'm at. Yeah. Because I'm not an anomaly. Yeah. But there's many of me. Mm. Like, yeah. I played in certain places, people are like, oh my god, you're amazing. I'm like, yo, that's a thousand of me. Yeah. Like, I'm a dancer, DJ, this is what we do. I don't know if I'm white or in Wagwan, but I've just been given the platform to really show what I do. And I'm definitely want one to say, like, fly the flag. Yeah. There ain't no better entertainers in the world yeah. than reggae and dancer. Factory. Yeah, 100%, 100%. Factory, factory speaking. So yeah, my, my thing is just to continue yeah. what I'm doing, put the foot on the gas. Would you like to say down the camera to the listeners, the people that have supported you, what would you like to say to them? Thank you. And um, thank you for believing in me. There were times that I didn't even believe in myself. I don't take this Shawnee B character like that. You yeah. get what I'm saying? I'm fun with my music. Yeah. And when people are like, yo, Shawnee, you're the one, you're the one that's kind of carrying this team through and representing it properly and all the rest of it, I'd have to start listening to all yeah. of that and then kind of like shoulder the responsibilities and all the rest of it. So thank you. I'm listening to you guys. I appreciate you guys. You know what I mean? Even just to be held up and to know that my name is in the scrolls. Yeah. Like, that's me yeah. off the block. Like, genuinely, I never believed yeah. it, but I'm thankful for it. For real. Yeah, man. I have to give you a hug, you know. Blessings. I really appreciate it. Blessings, really. blessings. And of course, when you're ready, big up myself. Big up, big up, <laughs> big up DJ Cat every time. Oh, oh, and oh, the Rasta oh. Queen, you see it. And don't feel say she's running, her grandfather is black. I understand, so back up. <laughs>